BTS is the first group that I reacted to, that reacted to their music that started to pop off. And then more and more of their fans started to come over, listen to my music, follow me on socials, all that stuff. It was, it was like the, the start of my fan base was stemming from BTS's fan base. One fan um, DM'd me and claimed to be a PR person for BTS. You're reacting to something or making content about a certain band or artist. Sometimes they'll reach out and be like, and this happened multiple times. They'll reach out and be like, hey, want to come to a show sometime? But we started talking a lot. It, it even got to a point where I became so close of friends with them over months that I gave them my YouTube password. At the time when you're not used to getting any views, any notice at all, any um, attention at all on the internet, and then all of a sudden it comes flooding to you, and like an opportunity like that seemingly comes your way, it just seems like it's an awesome thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's hard and, to tell uh, what's real and what's not, dude. I totally get it, dude. You can support the Mike Squires and Friends podcast by subscribing on YouTube or downloading on your preferred podcast platform. The Mike Squires and Friends podcast is proudly sponsored by DistroKid. Looking to broaden your musical horizons as an artist? Discover DistroKid. With its smooth and rewarding music distribution platform, DistroKid offers unlimited uploads while ensuring artists retain 100% of their royalties and earnings. Join the community of over a million artists who trust DistroKid to distribute their music across major platforms like Spotify, Apple, YouTube, TikTok, Tidal, and so many others. Having personally used DistroKid since 2018, I can attest to their superiority amongst distribution services. Collaborating with fellow artists has become effortless, especially with the ability to easily send splits of songs, streamlining the creative process. With the DistroKid app, accessing these benefits is now more convenient than ever. Safely sign up or log in with two-factor authentication, upload releases on the fly, monitor earnings, and withdraw funds from your DistroKid bank. Stay updated on royalties through push notifications, effortlessly share hyperfollow links, manage account details seamlessly, and track streaming stats from Spotify and Apple. Additionally, explore Mixia for professional-grade mastering, DistroVid for music video distribution, and Instant Share for secure file sharing with collaborators, producers, and more. The DistroKid app is available on both iOS and Android. Download from the App Store or the Google Play Store to revolutionize your music career. Visit distrokid.com slash VIP slash Mike Squires to get 30% off your first year membership. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Mike Squires and Friends. <laughs> Today I'm joined by a good friend of mine, YouTube phenomenon, artist, rapper, producer, engineer, a guy that does it all, Connecticut native, Joey, how you feeling today? Welcome to the podcast. Bro, it feels good to be here for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to, we'll address this right off rip. Um, so this is Joey's second appearance on the Mike Squires and Friends podcast. Uh, for most listening, it is his first public appearance. Uh, <laughs> but what happened was we we shot a podcast episode. I put it on the hard drive, and the hard drive crashed. I've been there. It, it's yeah. It was <laughs> it was tough, dude. And you know, so what I tried to do is you know, without Joey knowing, I sent out this hard drive so that I could just get it fixed. You know, pay to get it fixed get the episode up, act like it never happened, N not inconvenience Joey at all. Easy you know, peasy. That was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> what ended up happening is I sent out the hard drive, and they quoted me at a rate that just wasn't in the podcast budget. Mm. You know, we're talking, you know, a rent payment. <laughs> there you go. I <laughs> Talk, like that. We're it's talking 2024. To, yeah, we're talking a rent <laughs> payment for this podcast episode, which I let the company know that I could not do that at this time. So then I had to pick up the phone and I called Joey and I was like, yo, I got, I got some bad news, dude. And I had to give the lucky boy some unlucky news. And, uh, and I lost my mind. He I lost, lost my mind. That it, was, that was a rough one, man. Dude. It like, I've never seen anyone so upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, he was like, yo, I was so dreading making this phone call to you, Joey. But, uh, and I was like, yo, just don't worry about it. I'll just head back out because it was fun. It was fun. Last time we did it. It, it was a really good episode though. Uh, it really was. No, well, this is going to be an even better one. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because no. it has to be. This one's going to be a really, really good episode. Mm. So there we go. We're well, taking it up a notch. Well, Joey, for people that may not know who you are, <laughs> mm -hmm. can you give you a little explanation of what you do and where you're at? 
Yeah. Um, I kind of break up what I do into five categories. I rap. I produce music. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a Twitch streamer. And I make anime reaction content. And now I actually moved over to movie reactions recently. Just watched Lord of the Rings for the first time. And you react to the entire movie, like, all yes. the way through? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's, those are, like, all the things that that I do. So it's a lot. My brain is always on overdrive. I'm a, I've, I've realized how flawed of a human I am from doing trying to do all these things at once. I just talked to you about this a second ago. I was like, yo, your mind moves a mile a minute, huh? But, or a mile a second, I think I said. Yeah. Like Fast. They can't, like, you can't focus on just one thing. It's always... And then you said a distractions. My distractions are another task that needs to be done. Yeah. Like, no, that's that's my life. It's a little bit of a cheat code. You know, <laughs> when you're focusing on one thing and you, you get distracted to focus on another productive thing and, yep. you know, having as many avenues as you have, you know, you have opportunities to be like, okay, I don't feel like doing this right now. Let's, yeah. let's do a movie reaction. Yeah. You know, okay, movie reaction. I'm kind of tired. No more movies for today. Let's work on a song. You yeah. know what I mean? So I want to talk, like, where do you see, like, the most success? Uh, it's been on, uh, okay, well, it's on YouTube. Okay. But it's been through learning how to make music. Mm. Because a lot of, I have a YouTube channel that's, like, my main YouTube channel. And all the success that came to that was from people wanting to hear my music knowledge mm. on songs. So I do a series called Music Producer Reacts. Yes. So if... Mike Squires puts out a song and then called Hard Drive. <laughs> and then <laughs> no, I, go, no. I go react to the song called Hard Drive. I like when I listen to it, I break down, I, you know, crack jokes, try to be, you know, entertaining at the same time while listening to it, but also break down what I hear from a music production perspective. Yeah. And people, people love it. And that's, yeah, that's where everything kind of stems from, the whole fan base. People that find my music that way. People find my Twitch streams that way. So, yeah. Have you ever reacted to something where somebody wasn't happy with your reaction? Yes. Dude. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you know something? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of the band? Well, let's just put it out there. Yeah. Let's put it out there. I'm going to premise this by saying, if you watch my videos and you're a Falling in Reverse fan... Don't ever ask me to react to Falling in Reverse. Have you ever heard of Falling in Reverse? I have. Are they a rock band? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's how I Yeah, they sound so them. familiar. Um, yeah, the, the main guy's name is Rodney Radke, and he um, has his own Twitch channel, and he likes to watch reactions to his songs in front of his fans. And then he watched one of my reactions, and he basically coined it the worst reaction ever and when he was watching it he was saying things like i would never work with you dude da, 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 da. And, I, and it's because i was explaining to the fans what was going on in the music but i think he wanted more of a criticism mm. or an opinion on it like this is good i really like this or i don't like this but i never said anything like that it was I just was more just, like analytic of like exactly from like a mix standpoint, like a production standpoint, like how all the vocal was it, yeah, all of it, vocal production standpoint, all of that, and um, yeah, he uh, basically said this is the worst reaction I've ever seen. This guy sucks. Blah 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 blah. Maybe I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, but um, yeah, that that's that's a great example right there. When you see something like that, though, are you getting like, how are you feeling? Are you just like, oh man, like this is not what I wanted to see? Salty. You were salty, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> Very salty. <laughs> and like, uh, but you know, I try to have fun with it. Try to make the most of it. This is on our. Uh, this reaction was on a channel that I don't even use anymore. Oh wow! It was a joint channel with um, my friend Crypt, who's mm. a YouTuber with a, over a million subscribers now. But he, um, yeah, we had a joint reaction channel at one point, and when he reacted, I recorded me reacting to Rodney reacting. To my reaction to his song. and um, It's a whole chain of <laughs> reacting, dude. And I just got a whole bunch of hate because, yeah, Falling in Reverse is bigger than Joey Nato. And it was just, it was, uh, yeah, man. So, so salty is yeah. how it is. And I banned the word Falling in Reverse on my YouTube. <laughs> so if anybody ever requests a reaction to it, it just goes into the... Uh, uh, the reported spam. Yeah. <laughs> That's mad exactly. funny, dude. Like, I want to talk to you, too, because I want to talk to you about your music career, right? Yeah. So 
You started early on, and I know Dan the Man had a folder of raps. Yeah, yeah. I had to bring it did. up for a second time. I know, dude. bro. Oh, see, this is why I'm mad the first one got deleted. <laughs> yeah, dude. You sure you didn't delete it because I was looking at this camera, the, the wrong camera the whole time? No, no. dude. <laughs> I have the heart. You know what? And you know what's funny? Because the company said that they fixed it, mm -hmm. and they were like, you know, we're going to send the hard drive back. But I guess they unfixed it before they sent it back because I was hopeful that when they sent it back, I'd be able to just plug it in, and it would, you know, work. But no, nah, that wasn't the case, dude. So... Here we are again. Yeah, what's up with... All right, all right, all right. We won't get into this, how data recovery works. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, well, what we can say real fast before we get into the beginning of your rap career yeah. is uh, we're in the wrong business, dog. <laughs> Apparently. We're supposed to be preying on morning entertainment and content creators that lost their data yeah, and was, try to prey on them to get as much money as we can out of them. Yeah, dude, it was... I like the sound of that. <laughs> no, that's, that's not, my, not my style. But yeah, bro, when he brought up uh, Dan the Man, my brother, he doesn't go by that anymore. But at the time, yeah, him pulling out folders and rapping for people at school. When he, that was like a Nardwar type moment when you brought that up. <laughs> that really was. Um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, he he wrote so many raps. He would have a Manila folder, and like if somebody walked up to him in the hallway and was like, "Hey, Dan the Man." Rap for us. He would pull out a manila folder full of raps. That's crazy. Pull one out and just rap. It's amazing. It it's is amazing, amazing, dude. But, uh, uh, yeah, that inspired me to, okay, my brother's doing this at school. People seem to like it. Let me try it myself. And then, like, fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, I probably wrote, like, my first rap. Or yeah. Whatever. When do you start recording? Ooh, I know. Okay. I guess the first time I started recording, well, I went to a uh, recording studio at Yale University, actually, to record an album that I still haven't heard to this day. I did it with my best friend at the time, Luke, um, who's an artist, L2B, if you want to check him out. But, uh, yeah, he. Um, it's good to know that people from way back then are still doing what they want to do, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, we uh, went to Yale University because uh, his mom had, like, a connect there, somebody that had to do a... I think it was for a school project. I think they were going to Yale for music or sound recording or something. I didn't know they had that program there. Did you? No, I didn't know. <laughs> when I think of Yale, that's not the first thing that comes to mind. No, not at all. But, um, but yeah, that's how we got in and was able to record a little bit uh, there. I don't know if I was doing the whole... There was one point where, you know, Walmart microphone, put the microphone up to the speaker as close as you can and rap into it so that way you could hear the beat in the background. That's crazy. I, I wasn't on that level, dude. No, okay. Yeah, that's how that's how it started. That's crazy. That's how dude. it started. But um yeah, the first professional studio experience was the Yale one. You said you never heard the album. How come? I don't know. It just <laughs> never guess, uh, Yeah, it just never it happened. It was done. I'm sure she turned it into her teacher and got I don't know. <laughs> whatever grade she got. So somewhere in the universe there's like just this obscure like <laughs> Wu-Tang never heard this album before don't don't compare it to Wu-Tang um <laughs> the all the beats I made on a Yamaha keyboard mm. you know how they give you six tracks to work with or whatever yeah that's how I made them is which that, is fun now that I'm looking back at it is that the but, Yamaha keyboard that your parents got you yeah there you go there yep he um so there's two things my parents got me for my music career ever um is the Yamaha keyboard which was important for me to learn music production and then uh, my saxophone in fourth grade, because I played the saxophone. That was the first music thing that I really did before starting to rap and all the stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, and then in sixth grade, that was the big breakthrough. Mm. So the software I use for making beats is called Reason Studios. Yes. So uh, my music teacher, Mr. Stevens, shout out to Mr. Stevens, um, he introduced me to that software in sixth grade. And I've been uh, using it ever since. That's been my software of choice. So, yeah, that's the beginning of the whole music production ride. Yeah, and I want to talk to you, too, about the YouTube music community because, you know, mm. I think about you when I think of that entire community, dude. Mm. And I know those ciphers that Crypt did. Like, I want to dive into all of it, dude. Listen, uh, so Crypt is Crypt's my boy. Like, I, 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 I'm hoping that... It works out where I get to go to his wedding later this year in Kentucky, okay? Like, he's my guy. Um, he's definitely, and so I don't want to sound too biased here, but he's the one. He was the glue keeping the U YouTube music scene 
together. And I think it was cool. It put a lot of people on to different talent that they wouldn't look, wouldn't think to look for. You know what I mean? You wouldn't think to look on YouTube to find an artist you're going to play on Spotify when driving around and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And I, I kind of got general public's consensus on YouTube music when I was playing basketball one day and then on, on the court, I was like, hey, uh, do you listen to YouTube music or YouTube rappers? He was like, nah, man, I listen to real music or I listen to real rap. And I was like, it's good to ask people that, those questions, though, without any like I didn't say I was from a YouTuber or anything like that. Yeah. I didn't say I made music. I just wanted to get a idea of what people thought about the scene, but they really put a spotlight. Everybody that was involved in that time of putting, you know, people on notice that there's talent and people rapping in their bedrooms and you know rapping um, and putting music primarily on YouTube. I think a lot of people since then have professionalized their look, made themselves a little bit more marketable mm. online, which is great. But um, yeah, but TikTok's kind of doing the same thing now. TikTok's like the new wave of YouTube rap. Would you? Well, what do you think of that? I think so. You're talking like, because I see all these open verse challenges, right? And yeah. that's kind of what comes to mind where it's like it really gives anybody an opportunity to just, you know, hop on this and see what happens. You know, yeah. there's literally been careers made from someone hopping on an open verse. And where are they rapping it in, in, in the video most of the time, right? In their bedroom. Yeah. You know, so or, or wherever. So. Yeah, that's kind of the the do-it-yourself rapper, I think, was really... I think it inspired a lot of people. Yeah. I know for a fact it inspired a lot of people that, like, watched people like Crypt and... Um, I can't think of any names right now, but myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, doing it, you know what I mean? Because they were like, hey, this guy's just rapping right in his home studio or whatever and putting it on YouTube. People are loving it. I could do it too, you know? So. What do you think made you guys stand out so much? Because... For a hot second, you guys had the game on lock, dude. You couldn't open up YouTube without seeing you guys, at least for me personally. We did. Uh, one of the YouTube ciphers did go trending once, and I say we. I feel like I'm a part of every YouTube cipher. I only rapped on one, mm. the the first YouTube cipher. There's – how many was there in total? I know there was three. There was at least three, three main ones. But, um, yeah, we, we uh, went trending, and I say we because I produced all of them. Oh, amazing, That's why. dude. Yeah, Crypt, luckily. I, I produced one song for Crypt, and he was like, okay, this is my guy now. That's kind of how Crypt is. If you, like, he, he'll he'll go with something that's convenient, you know? If he's like, okay, uh, I need you to make this beat for me. Oh, I like that beat. You're my guy now. <laughs> Until the end of time. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to mess around messaging anybody else or anything like that. So, yeah. shout out to Crypt for that. But, um, but, yeah, I think it was the camaraderie aspect of it. I think just the... Seeing, especially with the YouTube style videos, seeing everybody in their own environments, all in a collaborative effort to do something. One one shot, you got somebody. This isn't exact, but one shot, you got somebody rapping on a farm. The next verse, he's rapping in a um, Dick Sporting Goods parking lot. The next shot, somebody's rapping in an actual studio. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think people seeing that and seeing all these different styles and how they attack the same instrumental. I don't know. That's what I think is what made it interesting. It's weird that you say like, on lock because it didn't seem like that at the time. When you're in the moment, you're like, we're not doing enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it was kind of a weird era, though, too, where it was just like, you know, it was simultaneously you had the like, rise of the mumble rappers. You know what I uh -huh, mean? Uh -huh. Where it's like you see all these like SoundCloud artists like rising up. I'm seeing like YouTube, like you guys like doing. I feel like everyone like that was an era even with my music like on Swaggy tracks. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was felt like I was dominating in that little corner of the internet. You know, so I feel like yeah. it was a time where like kind of everyone had like their little pocket and were able to dominate their respective area. Yeah, I think so too. I feel like SoundCloud, the SoundCloud era was like right before. Maybe it was fizzling out, and maybe that's why YouTube was. Next up. That would make sense. To put on the independent artists. You know what I mean? Um, it's funny you mentioned Swaggy Tracks, too, because when I was first trying to get noticed on YouTube and get my music noticed, I would go under the Swaggy Track songs. Every time they posted, I'd try to go down there as fast as I could and put, hey, I'm Joey Nato. I'm a rapper. You know what I mean? It would mean the world if you check out my song. I saw other artists doing it in more effective ways, and I would just copy and paste their comment and put it and then take... 
I would go on different Google accounts that I made and like like the <laughs> yeah, comment, that's mad funny. so that way it would go up and people would see it. And uh, yeah, I did that a lot. That was like the beginning of trying to get my music out there. Yeah, on YouTube. I want to talk to you about some of the music that you made, but I want to bring it back to like you know trying to get your music out there a little bit too. Because what worked for me with Swaggy Tracks is I just emailed them. So I, I emailed them and I sent them our first release. No response back. Mm-hmm. I sent them the second release. And, like, I think maybe a couple of days after I sent that, we're, there it was a very minimal message. It was like, this is great. We're going to post it on Tuesday. Wow. Yeah, you know I mean? So it was just like that. But they've been like, you know, I don't even know who runs the Swaggy Tracks. I was going to ask shoot. if He's you ever like, had, like, actual conversation with the person that I guess, like, it. you know, maybe, like, a couple DMs here and there, like, a couple, like, but never, you know, I've never spoke with them. But they've been super supportive, especially that era. And it's crazy because... That era of YouTube and getting posted on those YouTube channels were so strong that our songs are still getting streams to this day because of those YouTube channels, yeah. dude. And it like it was a crazy era. And the it's mad unfortunate because you know, like all good things, you know, come to an end. I know, I know. But that's uh, what is it? Adapt or die. Adapt or die. Who dude. said that? That sounds like something I would say. Something you said. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, like, I have been listening to a lot of Mike Squire's podcast episodes to try to. You, you know, understand your, like, flow of doing podcasts. Everybody does it differently. Yeah. And so on. Um, yeah. You do need to adapt or die. But I want to talk to you about you rapping about trends that were happening. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shout out to um, Dame Drops. So Dame Drops is a food review critic. Uh, that, food Titan. Let me let me um, <laughs> say his title correctly. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, shout out to him. He's from Connecticut. Uh, and he was kind of like my first YouTube mentor, basically. Um, and he he threw the idea at me. He was like, go on trending, see what videos are trending on YouTube, rap about them. Like, make a rap summarizing what happened in the video. And um, this was before anything was happening on YouTube for me. Not, not, I had like 200 subscribers, 300 subscribers, whatever, at the time. And um, yeah, he was uh, like, even if it's a music video, rap about the music video, which I've done. <laughs> I've rapped about... Godzilla movie trailer. I rapped about a Sierra music video. I rapped about, I don't know. I've, I've done a lot of Mr. Beast videos yeah, at one point. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that in a second, but I want yeah, to stay we'll on this. Yeah, we'll get into that, too, because it stems from that. Um, but, yeah, it was just a lot of uh, waking up early, seeing what video was trending for the day, and just, for some reason, I do have, I say I don't really have talent. I have skill a lot when it comes to almost everything I do. And that I don't know if that's like, have you ever thought of that? Like talent is something you're almost like kind of born with and skill is something you've developed over time. Yeah, I think, you know, that is actually an interesting point. But I do think they're like hand in hand because I think you can become talented, like with getting better at your skill. Though, yeah, maybe. hone on and on your craft. Because yeah. the one instance I always think of with this particular, you know, conversation is that, you know, John Mayer, Connecticut native, yeah. uh, claims... He wasn't a good singer, but would practice and practice and practice until he was able. Like, apparently, okay, this is the John Mayer story. I'll tell it real quick. So (laughs) John Mayer worked at a gas station on the Merritt Parkway. He'd be doing the late night shift overnight. And, like, he would just be there behind there with his guitar and just practicing singing, like, all through the night. And, you know, he got good. And then... Now he is John Mayer. (laughs) What a goat. Yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. So That's so dope. You know, like, there's a lot of people that claim that they weren't talented, but, you know, because they hone on their skill, you know, and I think that applies to a lot of things, too. But the thing why I mention that is because for some reason I was able to do these raps, Mm. summarizing these videos in like an hour and a half. I think like it comes hours. more natural to some people. That's yeah. for sure. You know what I, I mean? I don't know how, though. I don't know how. Because he just told me, like, hey, watch this video, write some bars about it, about what it's about, and then do make a YouTube video wrapping it. And I was just able to do it extremely quickly. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like a talent that I have, you know? Which um, one did really well for you? The ones that did the best were the Mr. Beast ones. Okay, we're going to get into yeah, that right now yeah. then. So I started doing those after YouTube started popping off for me. Mm. And, um, yeah, I have a little story about that. It's not it's not that great of a story, but 
We'll take it over here on the Mike's Cars and Friends podcast. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we need content. If you have content, email it. No, no. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Beast um, was putting out videos weekly at this time. And then I was making rap recaps, is what I basically was calling it, about the uh, videos he was making. Some people would even comment, hey, thanks to you, I don't have to watch his whole videos anymore. I could just watch your rap recap of his videos. Um, but, uh, yeah, one day he posted on Twitter, we're going to be behind the mall at this place in North Carolina tomorrow at this time um, for a video if you want to be there. They just He posted that publicly on his Twitter. And then um, I was just looking at it. I was like, I guess I'm going to North Carolina. <laughs> so I just, like, called up my uh, wife who was – uh, in a class at the time, and um, I just called her. I was like, "Hey, I, th- I think I'm going to North Carolina, like right now." <laughs> and well, that's th- great. What was her reaction? She kind of knows how I am. <laughs> I'm like super spontaneous, and like once I have an idea in my head, you can't really shake it out of me. And I think this is something I've heard you mention too. If somebody tells you no. Oh, yeah. Double down. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't like being told no, dude. It's yeah. like, but yeah, I, I don't want to interrupt. So, no, nah, she, and she knows, she knows what I do. She knows who I am. So she knew what she was getting into before we got together. You know what I mean? Yeah. She knows what type of person I am. So, and that's one thing I love about her for that. So, yeah, it was cool. I um, jumped in the, the car and drove overnight on the highway, just straight down. No, no New York traffic. Just drove <laughs> straight down. Into North Carolina, and then, uh, yeah, when I got there, I was going there to show these rap recap videos of, you know, me rapping about Mr. Beast videos to hopefully show him or somebody in his team, and uh, he was sick that day. No, dude. Yeah, (laughs) they still did the videos. They never ended up putting the video out. Oh, no. After I know he put, I know he put $100,000 into the video. That's right. Do you remember what the concept of the video was? Yeah, we all dressed up in dinosaur outfits and ran around. Oh, I definitely have seen, like, a video like that online, too. It is out there. It is out there different, and that's why he did it, because it's worked in the past. Mm. But then he did it again, and this time it didn't, uh, why didn't they put this video out? I don't know, but he has a video. He put out a video on his main channel about videos he hasn't put out. Yeah. And it was mentioned there. And you can see me for one split second in the background putting on my dinosaur outfit. That's mad funny, my dude. shining moment on YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, when I went down there, um, didn't get to talk to him. But that's probably sometimes, sometimes a better thing is connecting with the people around him. Mm. And I was definitely able to do that. Um, come to find out after talking to some people, they were like, oh, you're the guy who was rapping about Mr. Beast. Yeah, we have you in the group text. Uh, the, the the video group text that we have and like That's they knew funny. who I was they knew what I was doing, um, and I wasn't getting a lot of views on those those videos. You know what I mean? A few thousand views, something like that. So it was just really uh, reassuring, yeah, to know that it was being seen. And then I got to meet a bunch of people in his team, and they were all really good people, really cool. And um, yeah, and after that. They started, like, reposting my videos and Oh, that's stuff. really dope. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the team members, not Mr. Beast himself. But that's still cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And I think what's more important is just having the connection now with those those people and just, you know, supporting each other online and stuff like that. Bro, just to bring it back to Swaggy Tracks real quick, mm-hmm. if you go look at some of those videos, who's commenting underneath them? What do you mean, now? No, back then. Mr. Beast, too, dude. Oh, he- yeah. You're right. You're right. He was really into that at the time. I have a story that, like, may not be my story to tell, but I'm going to just bring it up real quickly. We'll take it on the Mike Squires (laughs) and Friends podcast. So, (laughs) if I'm not mistaken, and Ollie, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but Mr. Beast reached out to Ollie Mm -hmm. to do the original Mr. Beast song. Oh, wow. I don't know the rest of the story, so Ollie, balls in your court, but... You know what I mean? I did hear that, and I'm pretty sure I heard that throughout. And it would make sense because he was a fan of all the Swaggy Tracks artists, you know? So, Are you on a uh, uh, basis where you could talk to Ali like, I and could just ask, hit him up? And I could ask him. He, I remember he told me about it years ago. It would be an out-of-the-blue text, though. I'd be like, That's you know, fine. <laughs> Bro, I love out-of-the-blue text. I don't yeah, know about you. I actually like them, too. I got a couple back-to-back the other day, and I was like, oh, this is kind of— 
little, you know, a little party going on here in the, I, the text. I want the 3 a.m. text message saying, you are you wearing blue slippers? <laughs> like, like, I want, I want random. That's, I like random. I want to talk to you, though. I want to change, <laughs> I'm going to change it up, though, because I want to talk to you about trends. Because, you know, you're mm. following trends, you know, with your music. How important do you think trends are to follow? Okay, so with music, I don't like to follow trends, mm. personally. Like, the, right now... At the time of recording this, if you're watching this in 2034 or whenever you watch this, <laughs> right now country music has kind of taken over. Country music has taken over. People are putting that twang in their music. People are trying to make it more appealing to the country. Fan. You know what I'm talking the about? The countryfication of hip hop, dude. Yes. I see it happen, dude. Yes, yes. So that for me, I, I kind of try to make my music timeless. You know, that's my personal opinion on it. Now, when it comes to the other side of things I do, reactions, yes. the reaction content, it's huge. Um, when you make reaction videos on YouTube, first of all, the main reason I make them is to uh, put on blast what I'm doing. You know what I mean? At, at the beginning of every video, I'm Joey Nato. I rap. I produce. You know what I mean? I have a Twitch channel, blah, 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 blah. It's it's a big, giant billboard for me when I put out a YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all about a race to see who could react to the new trending song first, because that's what's gonna um, get the most views, basically. No, nah, it's and real. Get you dude. the most eyes on you. So, following what's uh, trending, what's sometimes even waiting for a big song to come out. Like if there's like a you know a big song is um, coming out on a it usually is Friday. Yes. Or whatever. You you want to be up at 12 o'clock at night to make sure you're there when it comes out so that way you can put out your reaction first and get the most eyes on you. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that following what's trending and being in the know of what's going on is really important. I don't know if that's what you were no, alluding no, that, to. No, that definitely applies, too. And, like, I tell people that all the time where it's, like, being first sometimes is more important than being best, you know? And it's interesting you say that because— Right now, I'm kind of going through a phase where I'm, uh, it's the constant battle of like, do I sacrifice quality mm. for speed? You know what I mean? Yeah, and it is a sacrifice sometimes. Yeah, because I like personally, when I put out a reaction video, because a lot of people's reaction videos are still shot, image, the video's in the corner, and they're just looking at it and be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But I like, <laughs> Zoom outs, zoom ins, boom, full screen of the video, me in a little circle in the in the corner, you know what I mean? Like memes popping up. Like I like it. Make it like a production. Be, exactly. That's what I like to do. But obviously that slows down my speed. Mm. For uh, So I'm like in a weird spot right now where I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep editing the reaction videos or just keep them raw. You know what I mean? Sometimes raw is good for a reaction video because sometimes people just want to see it raw uncut reaction yeah you know? and um but yeah well you know what what's something that's trending right now <sighs> the only thing that comes <laughs> the one thing that comes to mind and it's a little like it's still kind of past its height uh but the kendrick lamar and drake beef okay dude, yeah that's yeah. something that i feel like is still so i propose that for two minutes of this podcast we talk about the kendrick lamar and drake beef okay <laughs> And see how it applies. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because you're going to put it as a chapter. <laughs> yeah. And then it, see if that, like, has the most. Yeah, you yeah. know, we'll, so we'll talk. Well, first of all, you know, Drake or Kendrick. Uh, who won it? Oh, it's obvious who won. Oh, okay. Well, right, we're, we're right on the same page. We want to say it at the same time. Oh, yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Kendrick. Kendrick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I liked Drake's songs though. Mm. I liked Drake's songs a lot, especially his last one that he put out. I love that beat. I don't. I know it's not the diss. <laughs> yeah. But I love the beat. I liked his lyrics in it a lot too. Are you you're um, talking about the heart part six? Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I don't know. Like. But not, not like, like us. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That's one, really all you have to say. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it right now in my head. It's crazy that DJ Mustard made the beat. I wonder if it's something he had tucked away. Bro. That Mustard sent them a long time back. It sounds like a throwaway beat, but you gotta, doesn't it? So, dude, no, I love that beat, too. And the thing is, though, it doesn't strike me as a Kendrick beat, but I yeah. think that's also probably why it's so great because, you know, with the whole Drake and Kendrick beef, mm -hmm. 
Kendrick outbopped Drake, and that's Drake's whole thing. You know what I mean? Like Drake's whole thing is being like the chameleon and like adapting and giving you what's hot right now. You know what I mean? So to get outbopped, like it's crazy. And then also he's having fun while doing like Kendrick's having yeah. the most fun while doing it. He's like dancing on his grave. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. uh yeah, and to me it's just like the hard part six to me is awkward a little bit too with how Drake is Dancing around the well, it just the issues. Well, he's I think he attacked him pretty straight on, but it's just awkward hearing this come out of Drake's mouth. And like, not for nothing though. Like, if I say if I, we're talking normally, right? And I'm just like, yo, I'm not a criminal. Like, you're like, okay, I wasn't thinking you were a criminal, <laughs> but now because you said you're not a criminal, <laughs> it's almost validating that you might in fact yeah. be a criminal. So I just think it wasn't. I, I think he was backed in a corner. He didn't really have any other options. So with yeah. that being said, like, you know, I think he did what he had to do. But with Kendrick just ended up having more fun, dude. And I feel like it's crazy because Drake really started it. It was like poking the bear and antagonizing, like, and then all of a sudden Kendrick, just, like, boom. And then he, so then it went Family Matters, right? Mm-hmm. And then from Family Matters, it went into. Was it Meet the Grams right after that? Immediately after, dude. And that, like. Like 30 minutes what? later, so Kendrick immediately deflated the tire right. of Drake's. Like, I don't it, ever want to listen to that song again. Bro, Meet it, the Grams. I don't want that song, bro, especially right after having a son myself. It, it was like, I was like, it was a psychological <laughs> horror of a song, dude. It just sounds creepy. The yeah. beat is creepy. Is that like piano? That like, like ding, just, ding, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like. like so I'm glad he dropped Not Like Us right after. First of all, I was late. I was late to the show with this because. When I uh, when people are dependent on hearing me for like reactions to stuff, I don't want to listen to anything until I have the time to react to it. Mm. And I just wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really feel like reacting to those songs when it was all rolling out. Um, also, I react more to like music production elements of songs, mm. so it didn't really feel like my bag. But Drake was not in his bag for this this whole thing. If he was making the bops more. I think he could have won people over like that. Yeah, and the last thing, too, I'll say is Drake wasn't as focused as he should have been. There was a moment where he was, like, kind of coming at everybody, mm -hmm. and there was a moment where he really needed to shift his focus to Kendrick yep. and didn't. You know what yeah. I mean? He was still talking about, like, Rick Ross and stuff. Yeah, and like, yeah, like nah, nah, it's just me and you, buddy. Like, we're, we're yeah. There's a lot of memes from the Kendrick and Drake beef. My favorite one was uh, there was this video of this dude, and, like, Drake's like, oh, my, my disc was hard. And everyone's like, no, no, like, what? Like, who, who's Dave Free? What is it? Like, what? Like, yeah. they're just like, what are you even talking about, dude? Like, and then they're just like dancing. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, but that's, Drake has always had like, he thinks that the, the fans are smart. You know what I mean? And he treats them like they're smart. But I don't know. Sometimes certain things will go over the general Public fan base's head. head. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's why Not Like Us was also a big thing for for Kendrick, because a lot of times he'll be Mr. Lyrical, put say things that have triple have entendres and all stuff like that. Yeah. And I think there's something to be said about this with everybody making their music, because at the end of the day, we're going to leave this beat. Years are going to go by. Mm -hmm. What are you going to remember? In my eyes, you're going to remember two things. Mm -hmm. First thing you're going to remember is a minor. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just that's. You know, and then the other thing, I think you're just gonna remember the not like us, like the the vibe of that song. Like you're gonna remember it's how that song made you feel. This whole conversation, all I've seen in my head is the the YouTube screenshot of the the mansion with the yeah iconic <laughs> and dude. And then all I hear in my head when you've been talking the whole time, I've been following everything you're saying, but all I hear is. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's all I hear this whole time. <laughs> it's like, it's haunting me. But yeah, um, but it was entertaining. I was late to the party, but then one day on a Twitch stream, I was like, hey, I'm going on. I'm going to finally react to everything in one go. And it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a dope experience hearing <laughs> every song back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I want to talk to you too. I want to bring it back to like the YouTube community, right? So what was, like, one of the things when it started fizzling out? Like, what was one of the things you noticed? Because things change all the time. Um, some artists started getting bigger. Mm. Some started getting more successful. And then egos became a part of it. I think uh, 
I don't want to speak too much for Crypt here, but I think he stopped doing the. First of all, they were a lot of work to do a. It's it's a lot of work to get a lot of different artists to cooperate in a short amount of time. Trust believe me. it or not. Trust me. <laughs> and I say that That's because my reality, you're dude. doing your Fifty States project right now. <laughs> Again, PTSD mid podcast. <laughs> but continue, continue. But um, but yeah, but not only that is it like hard work to do all that, deal with all these different personalities and people's preferences and all stuff like that people's speed of work and how quick they're gonna get something turned into you but also just people being left out people are like oh your youtube cypher i want to be on the next one uh well i'm not i wasn't gonna have you on this one like oh well i'm gonna say something about that now because i'm pissed off and blah 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 Mm. that was happening a lot and then you know it kind of just became less fun that's the big thing. It kind of sucked the fun out of it a little bit when people started acting that way. Things easily get ruined when they stop becoming fun, dude. You <laughs> yeah. know, and that's like why a lot of things die. Because it's yeah. like, if you don't enjoy doing it, we're not going to do it. Exactly. You exactly. Know? It's not something we had to do at the time. But it was it was putting some artists on. And it was just, for me, the best thing about it was the networking. Mm. By far. I'm not the best networker. I know you are. We talked about this a little bit last time. Like, you were like, yeah, I'm on my way home because you have, like, what, an hour drive, 40-minute drive? Yeah, dude. You're like, yeah, I'm going to be calling up a bunch of people that I haven't talked to in a little while and just chopping it up with them. Like, wow, that sounds amazing. Like, I'm I'm not that type of guy that does that. But um, I think it's important to do that, too. Like, even just, like, some homey stuff because especially within music, it's, like, it's a very – friend driven business oh, yeah. you, you make songs with people because you like them that's yeah. most of the yep. like obviously there can be like some business advantages to working with certain people mm-hmm. but most of the people I work with mm-hmm. that's why it's the Mike Squires and Friends podcast yep. you know yep. what I mean it's like these are people that I would talk to mm-hmm. outside of the podcast like just to say what up to not just like they're not just here for the sake of just being here you know exactly and that that's something I have to work on now. Is <laughs> ever since you said that last time I was here, I was like, I gotta start making some calls, start reaching out to more people. But yeah, the networking aspect was the best part about doing the YouTube cipher, the YouTube music scene, all of that. It was the networking, it was the relationships I established with people that I still have to this day. Maybe I should touch base with some and be like, Hey, I'm not dead. How about you? <laughs> just to make sure that we're like, like you know, just touch base and everything like that. But um, but yeah, the networking was the best part of the YouTube music scene. And when it the relationship started, uh, or people wanted to be part of it, and then couldn't be or wasn't their time yet is probably the best way to put it. Because you can't have a hundred people on the on the cipher. You know what I mean? Um, well, you could, but I don't know how many people are gonna listen to. Thing, yeah, it'd be a long cipher, dude. But yeah, that's why I fizzled out. Just that and the egos. And some people became bigger than it for, for, for the better. You no, know what I mean? Good. They have like sustainable careers and stuff like that. So. Who, who are some of the people? Can we talk about that? Like who are the assholes? No, no, no. Who are the <laughs> like, no, no. I, no, 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 I would I would say put, that. I have the list right here. No, I'm just <laughs> No, like some of the people that like really blossomed from it. Yeah, like, for in a sure. Shouts way. to uh Luke Gone. Okay, I know Luke. Um shouts to uh like, he's somebody I could probably call right now and just be like, what's up? You know what I mean? But we don't talk too much, but he's just, he's a real good dude. Real good dude. Um, Quadeca didn't blossom from it, but he was part of the YouTube scene. Yeah. And now he's I see kinda, him on Hive Mind a lot, right? Yeah. Same Quadeca? Yeah. That's a, that's a good, I don't know what to call it, show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good channel. That's a good channel. Uh, I found out about that because he collabed with them. Oh, amazing. Um, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, who, who also blossomed from it? Uh, but, you know. Me. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one. I still have people today that, like, someone will, like, come into, like, comment on a, a video or come into one of my Twitch streams where I'm playing a game and, like, they'll ch- they'll say, Hey man, discovered you from the YouTube ciphers, blah, 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 blah. Glad to see you're still doing your thing, blah, blah, blah. We so, got to talk about somebody yeah. who we both have a record with, who we talked about a lot on the last podcast, and would be upsetting yes. if we didn't bring him up this yes. time on the redo. Yes. Our boy Atlas. Yes. Shouts to Atlas, man. Yeah. My biggest song is with Atlas. It's, all, it's sitting right now at over 4 million plays on Spotify Woo. alone. So that was. Shouts to Atlas, man. That's the Kryptonite joint? Yeah, Kryptonite, yeah. And that, 
You know what's weird? A little fun fact. I uh, recorded all the verses for that song while uh, in Call of Duty lobbies. Like, waiting for this. So I would play around. Once it, once it ends, you have, like, two minutes of sitting idly for the next round to start. I would just, yeah, just rap some some whatever and then go into the next one. So it probably took a long time. That's <laughs> the craziest one of those multitask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> res me, res me, but not too fast. Like, yeah. Biggity, biggity, biggity. <laughs> exactly. Because I don't write. Personally, I don't write or type lyrics. I kind of uh, do it like a bar at a time, come up with it in my head, and then rap it, and then cut in and just keep rapping like that. But, yeah, that's the one. The one that just minimal effort. And that's the one that just uh, – but, hey, some people can say, hey, maybe it's because Atlas is up there and his voice is amazing. Shots and that Atlas. that record came out of you were dropping a song every day. Yeah, at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I w- I was trying. Yes. I reached what 18, 17 days, seventeen days. I reached doing that, and then I think six days later I was like I'm back and put out another one, and then just never <laughs> <laughs> never dropped again. <laughs> bro, it's hard. Every day is like <laughs> such a hard process to do. But the th- yeah. the thing of it though is your biggest record came from. Less than three weeks of effort. Yeah. No, um, it was the, Kryptonite was the either seventh or eighth mm. uh, song that I put out. And, yeah, it was literally every day I was trying to make sure to put it on YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Those are, like, the three that I wanted to do. But, and obviously, I just a distro kid. <laughs> Let's go. We can talk <laughs> I put out all my music through distro kid. They put it on all the platforms for you. So I wanted to make sure it went on all platforms, YouTube and SoundCloud. Every day, right at like twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and um, yeah, some the the first few did decent because people were excited about it. Like my fans were excited, like you're dropping a song every day, or I don't know if I announced it or not. I think they just started to like see that Pick something up on was it. up. Yeah. yeah, but for some reason that one took off. There's a, there's a couple theories I have about why it happened. One, Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Is uh, I included it because uh, I always promote my songs in my YouTube videos. Mm. At the end of the video, like when it's like, it's like, all right, man, see you in the next one. Not a, and then my music starts to play at the end. And then, of course, in the description or pinned comment, I put, this is the outro song I was playing. Mm. So then people could check it out. So I did that for a song that was, I did, I put the song in a video that did pretty well. Got like three hundred thousand views or something like that. So oh, insane. Yeah. So maybe people are going to it from that. Um, and then also Atlas. This is such a dope move by him. He dropped a uh, Kryptonite, three doors down Kryptonite cover mm. on the same day that I put out the song, and then promoted it on his YouTube channel too. So yeah, that's very smart too. Yeah. And I think people underestimate how much power some of these YouTube channels have when your song gets used in the outro and things like that, because this is a major throwback. Uh, So Ray William Johnson used to have a vlog that he used to do. Mm -hmm. Don't remember the name of the vlog. Okay. But what I do remember is in the outro, he would use this artist, Out of Sight's music. Mm. And that's how I became aware of Out of Sight, an artist that, you know, I'm still tuned in with today. And that was over a decade ago. So, you know, you never know who's listening to what when your music's like just lightly in the background. Yeah, I think um, it kind. Of, I think the best strategy. This is kind of tough for me because I make a lot of songs. I have a big catalog, so I always want to like put people on to different songs that I've done because I'm proud of a lot of them. You know what I mean? But I think the best strategy is to make that one song your outro song or your intro song mm. for a video or for your content, so people just. Because people will naturally start. To, it's like what the radio does to trick you into liking songs, right? Oh, yeah, dude. Plays it over and over and over. It's like, oh, I didn't like this before, but now I love it. <laughs> yeah, so You, you want to hear a fun story that's not so fun but still fun? Yes. So the Mike Squires and Friends podcast, you're familiar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's an intro song that plays when there's a little animation going on. Mm. That is one of the 50 State songs. Oh. But... I sent it to the artist. They put verses on it. Sounded great. I haven't heard from them. I don't have the stems, dude. So if you're that artist, dude, 
What's going on? I, <laughs> bro, it's so fire. Like, and I don't know what to do with okay. it, but it's like. So this is one of the songs that hasn't been put out yet. Correct. And you just want it mixed properly and sounding right so that way. Yeah, well, and I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to figure it out, like, with the artist, too, because maybe they're not happy with it where the song landed. But from my perspective, I'm like, yo, this is this is the one, dude. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite beats, too. So I'm like, but now, because of this, the beat is in purgatory because I don't know if they want to do it, if they don't want to do it. Like, you know what I mean? So... When did you, uh, could you say what state it is, or no? Is that too much? I don't want to narrow it down. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> is it in the west, east, north, or south? We'll not narrow it down. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. I will say it's fire, though. When's the last time you reached out to them? I've reached out a couple times, tried to reach out through homies, and haven't heard much back. Oh, damn. damn. It's tough, dude. That's, it's tough, so. That's weird, though. I feel like that's weird. Like, it's just a simple thing, like. But who knows? You know, I, like, I'm somebody who is never, I never try to be judging, right? Because yeah. I just don't know what anyone's going through. Because, like, yeah, yeah. for all I know, he's going through some life stuff and just can't get back to me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And this applies to every everything that you do. Like, mm-hmm. try just to take it with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you just never know what someone's going through. You, for all I know, he's having the worst time of his life. Or vice versa, he's having the best time of his life, and he's just like, can't deal with it right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like... Yeah. I'm not tripping either way, but a good way to, like, run through life is just knowing that nobody owes you anything. Mm -hmm. So this way, like, you know, when things like this happen, you're just like, whatever, you know? I respect that. It kind of goes back to the—I'm sorry. No, Uh, I was going to say, it is a fire song, though, so it does hurt me. Yeah, no, I saw the the pain in your eyes (laughs) when you said it. You are like, oh, this is the one, and you just won't. Respond, and he reached out to homies too. Like, oh, and the that's... song is done. That's the craziest part to me, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the that is the hardest part of the process. You well, know? I hope everything is all right with uh, this particular I'm, individual. I'm, I'm sure they're okay, but I would love to get that song. Yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> but but we'll keep it pushing, dude. I was gonna say eggs in one basket. That's a whole nother reason not to put your eggs all in one basket. It kind of so. goes right back to the beginning of this podcast, where it's like you know. We're talking about all the different things that you do. That's what I was going to get to. That's why I do so many different things, because if one collapses, I have something else to Mm. pick me up. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I'm like. It's very important to not keep all your eggs in one basket. I've had plenty of baskets, you know, phase out, get destroyed. Like, Mm -hmm. because, you know, I have been at a point in my career where I did have a lot of eggs in one basket. And then that basket disappeared. Like, this is like... The touring? Well, touring... So, it's not touring because touring was a... Uh, it was kind of my choice to take a step back from touring. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Or okay. it's like, I felt like... That's the thing. When you're in control, like, mm-hmm. that's the best case scenario. You know, mm-hmm. when you can make calls like that where you're like, okay, I don't want to do this run, so I'm not going to. Yeah. But, you know, when you're working, like... For, so, the particular story I'm talking about is I was just working very closely with an artist, doing a lot of videos for them, mm-hmm. and they just didn't hold it down on their yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... I think we all have multiple stories about <laughs> that Oh, happening. yeah. yeah Didn't sure. you, don't you have a story about, like, you got to correct me on this because I think I'm going to say it wrong. But I'm scared. <laughs> did you get scammed or almost scammed or... Scammed or almost scammed. Could you or be so, more specific? Someone was, like, fake... Someone, multiple times. someone was pretending to be somebody... Yeah. Okay. Uh, you did a re. You did a reaction to a K-pop group. Oh, oh. Th- this is the one that I'm talking about, dude. We talked about this last time. We did talk. We about did this. talk about. And then you had an amazing story to follow up on it. Okay, let's tell yours. Are we gonna redo this? We Are can we redo this. About? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, mine is pretty messed up, man. Oh, I already know what mine is too. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, BTS is the first group that I reacted to, that I reacted to their music that started to pop off with my reaction videos. Because um, I was doing reaction videos, they were doing pretty good. Like somebody with a thousand, 500, like a thousand subscribers getting 20,000 views on a reaction video, that's pretty good. Um, but the, yeah, when I reacted to a BTS one and explaining what was their music production like and how they were putting their songs together based off what I was hearing, it's like 200,000 views overnight, whatever it was. So that's what really Insane, started getting dude, things yeah. going. So then I was like, okay, people like the the BTS reactions. I'm going to start doing more. 
you know, this is in 2018. Um, and then more and more of their fans started to come over, listen to my music, follow me on socials, all that stuff. It was, it was like the, the start of my fan base was stemming from BTS's fan base. But then one fan, <laughs> or yeah, sure, because a PR person could be a fan, right? One fan um, DM'd me and claimed to be a PR person for BTS. And they were kind of uh, secretive about it and stuff like that. But, you know, I think it made sense. Like, if you're reacting to something or making content about a certain band or artist, sometimes they'll reach out and be like, and this happened multiple times. They'll reach out and be like, hey, want to come to a show sometime? Want some merch? You know what I mean? And that's what happened with this this person. But we started talking a lot. And um, they were claiming to, uh, you know, have, like, a relationship with one of the BTS members and stuff like that. Which I was like, oh, yeah, it's the music business. Stuff like that happens. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, they sound so naive. Long story short, I basically ended up getting catfished by this person. They didn't take anything from me. It even got to a point where I became so close of friends with them over months that I gave them my YouTube password to Which go in insane, to watch dude, a video. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was... Because I thought they were in, like, labor or something during that time, and they just wanted to watch the video that I put out. But it's at the time when you're not used to getting any views, any notice at all, any um, attention at all on the Internet, and then all of a sudden it comes flooding to you, and, like, an opportunity like that seemingly comes your way, it just seems like it's an awesome thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's hard and, to uh, tell what's real and what's not, dude. I totally get it, dude. And my wife was in my ear the whole time saying, catfish, catfish, catfish. <laughs> and then finally I, like, put the clues together and figure it out and then block did, them or whatever. Did your but, wife have an I told you so moment? Oh, pfft, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she always has it all, all over the littlest things. This one, forget about it. Because she kept promising to go to, uh, to have us go to a show um, to meet up with them in New York and stuff like that. And just kept promising, but there was always an excuse. That's mm. always the, the thing, right? Yeah. But, but, bro, when you get catfished, even though it wasn't a relationship or anything like that, it was just friendship. But still, any type of catfish makes you feel so stupid oh, when it's yeah, over. Dude. It makes you, oh, my God. It still hurts to this day, just, like, knowing I was so uh, naive. Yeah, dude. But, but it, it now my guard's up, and oh, yeah. it ain't happening again, I, you know? I might have said this exactly last time, but my homie Spose was on, and I love this quote, like, no lesson learned better than when you personally get burned. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, You know? Yep. Yeah. I'm happy to share mine now, too. Let's do it. Um, so, <laughs> you know, at Mike Squires, and this is the one that I told last time because this is the one that came to mind, yeah. So, at Mike Squires on Twitter is owned by a magician, and I have reached out to this magician plenty of times. You know, I found his, like, email... You know, I've, like, reached out asking and, you know, offering, like, be like, hey, I don't want this for free. Like, you know, I'd give me a little something, something for the username just so my name is the same across all platforms. Mm-hmm. So, so I could just be, like, at Mike Squires on everything. Absolutely. Um, So uh, I was in Europe on tour, and I get a message from at Mike Squires on Twitter. And he's like, I'm down to sell the username. And I'm like... What a great day. You know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. yeah, like, I don't know what's going on, but, like, this is something that I wanted, you know, so I'm excited. And he's basically like, send me 200 bucks right now and we'll figure it out. And I had been in communication with him plenty of times before where it's like, all right, like, I've talked with this dude enough to, like, know that, like, if he, like, you know what I mean? If he's hitting me up, he's probably about it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and keep in mind, this this page, so... I send the money, right? Just mm-hmm. not even thinking. Keep in mind, it's like 3 a.m. in Europe. Like, I'm tired, like, but I'm just like, whatever. You know what I mean? I want this username. And uh, so, you know, I send the money. And after I send the money, I'm like looking at this account. And I'm like, huh. Like, I'm no. So I can comp- immediately, I see that there's two Mike Squires pages. Like, the original one, Mike Squires. And then there's another one, Mike Squires. And I'm like, how, how are there two pages with the same username? And one of them is a magician? They're both, both have the exact same icon. They both have the exact oh. same profile okay. icon. They, you go to their tweet history and it's identical for a couple weeks. 
So, bro, someone plotted on me, dude, and it's insane. It's honestly— I've heard this before, and I'm over I'm still shocked by it. Dude, it's, like, really shocking, dude. So, basically, what had happened was somebody made a Mike's, another Mike Squires page in all capitals, but the I was really a lowercase L, dude. So, like, it looked like Mike Squires in all capitals, but it wasn't. So, I mean, that's, that's some genius. How would you genius. know? <laughs> yeah, that's and when I went to the page— for the last, like, and keep in mind, regular Mike Squires doesn't tweet that much, right? Okay. So the person, whenever regular Mike Squires would make a tweet, mm -hmm. other Mike Squires would make the exact same tweet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they basically, over the course of like a month, basically recreated the exact same account with yeah. all the exact same information in it. <laughs> so I got targeted, which is because nobody else could have fell for that scam other than me. But in yeah. my head, I'm like, honestly... I hate to say it, kind of impressed. Yeah, it, it is impressive. You know what I it's mean? It's amazing. Because, like, to go through that <laughs> amount of work for, like, I mean, 200 bucks is not nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, that's a lot of work for, like, you know, and it's like. He deserves it. He definitely does deserve he it. Deserves I'm, I'm not 200. Even, yeah, there's a, you know, there's another incident in my life, too, and I don't think we talked about this. Uh, last time, but I did a music video way back in the day when I just was starting mm -hmm. for a song called Five Finger Discount that I never got paid for. And I think back on that music video and I'm like, dude, I like, he literally told me he was not going to pay for this video when he sent me a song called Five Finger Discount. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I just was the like. writing was on the wall. Bro, so I just <laughs> like, it's one of those ones that I think back on and I'm just like, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it was there. You know what I mean? Like, I should have seen that one coming. So those two, I'm not, when it comes to scam, like, I really don't feel like, you know what I mean? At the time, the magician at the time I was bummed with, uh, the Five Finger Discount, I was a little bit more stressed at the time because I just was starting and actually needed the bread. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but that's part of the music. If you're going to get into it, that's where we can bring it now, is that if you're getting into music... You know, there's going to be a lot of people out here trying to sell dreams. There's going to yeah. be a lot of people out here trying to say that they're the guy. They're going to be claimed to be something that they're not, you know. And those are just two quick instances. Uh, I probably have a dozen more that I can think of. But as you go, you learn. You're just like, you know what to look for. I'd like to think I'm a bulletproof wall at this point when it comes mm -hmm. to those kind of stuff because I just like, if you don't see the person, in, but the thing is, I've even had people in person that I've met with that ended up being like shaky characters too. So, but you know what to look for. You just kind of like that's All the right. thing. <laughs> like over time, you just learn the lessons, and then it's just you All just right. know what to look for. I think you know the signs, you know the red flags. Mm. You know what I mean? And I lived in L.A. for a little while, and that made it even harder to figure out who was about it and who wasn't. LA's it's probably, yeah, really there's such a dynamic range, dude. Yeah. Like, and it's all smoke and mirrors, and everywhere you go, they're like, oh, just don't believe anything. It's all fake here, blah, 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 blah. But a lot of it isn't, you know what I mean? And then it, you might, like, I don't know, you might not be in the mood one day, and you tell off somebody that really could have changed your life, you know? Yeah. But um, not that I did that, but I'm just saying, like, your attitude, your heart's not in certain conversations because you think they're full of it. but And it's so hard to tell who's really somebody who's there to benefit you and who isn't but yeah yeah man um my strategy that i take though is just trying to be kind to everybody you yeah, know? Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah. easiest of course. easiest approach you know what i mean that doesn't mean you have to work with people that doesn't mean you have to like just respect yeah and that's i think all. respect is something that is very important within music i think i've gotten way more done off of respect than i have anything else you mm -hmm. know so Building respect is an important thing, and I think that comes with, you know, everything that we've been talking about in the pod, you know, mm -hmm. networking, you know, being a cool dude, being a team player, being, mm -hmm. you know, just being honestly yourself and just truthful and not putting up any weird anything because, like, people can see right through that. You're, you're a great representation of that because I think you're like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You're not somebody who I would think would be hanging around all these hip-hop artists and, like, stuff all like that, you know what I mean? Just based off your personality and how you come across and how you carry yourself. But it's clear that they just, they fuck with you because you're authentic. You know what I mean? Like, that Mike is Mike, and, like, you know, I'm just, gonna, he's, a, okay, he's a hard-working dude. Oh, he doesn't do these type of things that I do, but, you know, he's still 
It's funny though too, and I appreciate the kind words. Yeah. But it's funny because like you know we talked about this briefly before we even got on this pod, but like you know how Webby and I are like the Rick and Morty <laughs> dynamic. Yeah, I love that he said that. Yeah, but it's so true, dude. Like you know we'll be on tour, Webb's in the backseat snorting a pill off his phone. Yeah. And I'll just like, oh, I don't know, Webb. I don't know if you should do that right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, shut up, Squires. Yes. Uh, b- before I do another one. <laughs> I know, he does have the voice too, doesn't yeah, he? The like, that's voice. what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> we're, it's really a crazy dynamic, but it's mad funny. But yeah, no, like. So just some, be you is, is yeah, what we're getting and, across here. Like, yeah. It's so important. And like. You also, I don't think you can do a podcast like this if you're not yourself. Like, and you know, I th- let me rephrase that. I don't think you can do a podcast and like really ha- connect with people yeah. if you're not yourself. Because I think you're just so worried about like what people think, what is on everyone's mind, what, you know what I mean? But like when you're yourself, you kind of skip all the worrying part and you just get on here and get on the mics and just flap your gums and whatever yeah, but comes out. it's weird, bro. It's like, okay, one of the things... I'm going to try to keep my mind on our topic right now because I have to pivot away to get back to it. Yes. One of the most amazing talents, one of the most amazing entertainers to me that impress me the most are actors. Mm. And the reason why is because a good actor acts like themselves in a certain situation that the script calls for, Mm. basically. So you have to... But one of the hardest things to do... They put their twist on the character. Is to be... Yeah. But one of the hardest things to do is to be yourself on camera. Mm. And I don't know why. It's hard. It's like when a camera comes on or you know a camera's on or you know people are listening, you turn into what you said, what you think people want you to be Mm. or perceive you as. And, um, yeah, I think it's not easy to be yourself, especially as an entertainer. I don't. I think you have to find your voice. Mm. Because when I look back at, like, those YouTube videos that blew up in 2018... I'm talking like, I'm like, when I watch it now, I cringe. The quality of the video is fine. The the audio quality is okay and stuff like that. It's just how I'm talking and like, I'm talking like super loud for no reason and like, like trying to sound cool and shit like that. Like, no, just be yourself. And it, it, it takes time to get comfortable to a point to do that. So I think be yourself is great advice, but I think it takes work. To get there, I think it's a talent in it, or skill in itself. And I don't think Be yourself, yourself is camera. a definitive place. You know what I mean? I think it's something that's ever changing. You know what I mean? Because the person yeah. you were five years ago isn't the person you are now, isn't the person you're going to be in five years, you know, right. because you're learning more, you're going through different life. You know, things are changing your perspective, they're shaping who you are. So I think it's also okay to just kind of roll with where you're at right now, and not worry about it, and understand that. People do change, and it's even some of the greats. Like, you look at, like, a Mac Miller, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, how his music and him as a person changed sonically through his career, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, people like to see that, though. Like, they actually prefer to see that versus the person that's doing the same thing for a long time. And for some people, it does work, you know what I mean? Doing the yeah. same thing. But, you know, people change their opinions, and they change how they approach things, too. So yeah. I think being able to kind of goes back into adapting. If I was, If I was, like, giving advice, I wouldn't say try to be yourself <laughs> like you're yeah. saying like just be it's it's all about being comfortable really at the end of the end of the day like the first time we did this episode on the podcast or the the episode that got deleted by the way did yeah. you know our, our first episode got deleted no i didn't hear that you didn't know that no, oh, okay no. okay yeah um and anyways <laughs> more ptsd for you <laughs> um going back to that what that first time that i came here and did this i don't have i'm not in a podcast setting all the time you know what i mean i don't see these monitors in my face all the time and all these 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 type of lights and different cameras all over the place it felt weird and i felt like i wasn't really truly relaxed and being Mm. myself on camera you know what i mean so i'm kind of glad that you know i hired that guy to smash your hard drive and And i think it's not even just being yourself but it's just embracing who you are right you are who you are like i'm very self-aware i know i'm like a goofy kid Mm -hmm. you know what I mean that's how like I view myself you know so it's like you know it'd be mad out of pocket if I came out with like a song where I'm talking about like drug deals (laughs) getting girls yeah 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 Weapons, you yeah. know what I mean? Like they'd be like, "Yo, what, what's going on with Squires?" Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He's he's lost himself. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, you just gotta embrace who you are, and that's just that, you know. And I think happiness actually is aligned with that. Like, 
And going back to what you said, being comfortable. Yep, because then you don't got to put on a front. Every time the camera comes on, you don't have to become a character every time you do your work. And, yeah, it's easy to be consistent when you're just breathing and being yourself, you know what I mean? And I got got a couple more questions for you before we wind this down. Yeah, let's do it. One of the questions I want to ask you is, what's success to you? Um, So as somebody who's actually struggled with goal setting, for whatever reason for me, probably because every time I try to write down a list of goals, I start writing about something else, going back to the whole can't focus on one topic type thing. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, to me, it's, it's kind of just being able to do what you want for a living. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of just the, the simple part of it. Like, I feel like I am successful because I wanted to quit my job and – do entertainment full time and it's been that way for six years now you know so to me that's what it is just knowing what your main goal is and just reaching it I guess now don't get me wrong it's not over (laughs) yeah (laughs) there's more to build off of that but I'm just saying um doing what you want and being happy Mm -hmm. you know like just being happy every day I think is just it goes a long way. That go, that ties into my whole lucky boy nickname that I have for myself. It's just, that's part, there's a lot of reasons why it's like that, why I have that name for myself, but I'm just really, really lucky to be able happy to do this. Yeah. And do this, yeah. Um, but yeah, to me, that's, I kind of want to go back to you, <laughs> like throw it back to you. What is, what's success to you? You know, for a long time, like, I was definitely caught up on, like, the metrics of things and, like, uh-huh. you know, wanted to see things, like, level up. Now I'm right there with you. I don't know what – maybe it's as we get older, too. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? You kind of start realizing what's actually important. Mm-hmm. But, dude, I've been a creative my entire – I have never worked another job. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I, tr- I tried, Dude, I've tried – I tried out for caddying one day, and they didn't hire me. Caddying. That, caddying, <laughs> which is ironic, wow. though, because my sister is a caddy and a very successful caddy, dude. So it's, like, really it's really funny that, like, you know, and keep in mind, she's, like, half my size, you know, mm-hmm. and she's, like, there carrying double Triple bags. Bags, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, like, success to me is, like, really, you know, one, if you're able to find your passion and do it full time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I wake up every day, and sometimes I got to remember this, too, because— you know, it is a roller coaster of emotions, and sometimes, you know, I'm not feeling the best on every single day. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I do what I love. I make money off of it. Mm-hmm. I live off of it. I have not. Mm-hmm. I don't worry anymore like I used to. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like, and I'm happy. That's like the biggest thing, and I'm excited about what I'm working on too. So it's like, that's where I think. Success and happiness to me are really the things that are aligned because who cares about the fucking money? Who cares about the everything? I don't care about your benefits. I don't care about this if you're miserable doing it. Now, if you're happy doing it, cool. Yeah, I mean, but like if your success comes at the compromise of you being happy, I don't think you're really successful. Right. No, I agree with that. And I think I did mention happiness. Yeah, that I'm happy being able to do what I do all the time. You know, obviously there's caveats to that. It's not every day that I'm like, I get to do a YouTube video. I get to make a song. I get to do a Twitch stream. It's not like that all the time. Sometimes it's like, oh, man, okay, because it is work. You know what I mean? But then I remember all my past jobs. I've worked a lot of jobs, a lot. So, like, I think about that, and I'm like, if I ever went back to that again, I I, I might lose my mind, <laughs> you know? So, I can't even imagine it, dude. Like, yeah. I'm thankful that I never had to go to another job, but— I know that if I was to ever go to a job, I would pick someone that I absolutely hate so that I know that I have to get out of there. Bro, that's... You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. I kind of am mad at myself for that answer about when you said, what is success, success to you? And I said something money related, but mm. that's what came to mind. I didn't want to like... But it's not even just so much like... I don't view it as like money. I view it as being able to like live off of your career. Like that's the difference because that's freedom. That's freedom. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like you need it's it's hand in hand. You know what I mean? Where it's mm-hmm. like your happiness comes from success doing what you love. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And success doing what you love is being able to live off of it. So that's why you know what I mean? I don't view it as like a monetary thing where it's like money is my yeah. happiness and my success is more the freedom. Like you I've said. never had like a money target 
in my head or anything like that. I don't it think you can just, when you do this. And, like, you can hope, like, and think things are going to work a certain way. But, like, I don't think you have the longevity in this career because the money comes and goes. You know, yeah. I've had great months where I'm just like, oh, I'm alive. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unstoppable. Next month, I'm dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> next, next month, I'm just like, what? You know what I mean? Like, how are we going to even... Yeah. Keep this pushing, you uh, know? So yeah, 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 it yeah. is a roller coaster. And the key is to not get discouraged as you're riding that roller coaster. Right, right. It's like the freaking stock market. Yeah. Basically, just up and down. But, um, but yeah, like me personally, I have like 10 revenue streams every month that comes in. And that's why I like doing so many different things. Because if something is weak in one month, the other thing picks it up. You know what I mean? So, And a little here, a little here, a little here. Adds up to a lot always, dude. People that's miss That's basically like, what happens with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so. what I mean? So that's why people like should diversify and like really try to get into other things, especially if you're an entrepreneur or creative of any mm-hmm. sorts. Like, you know, and there's a lot of crazy ways to make money out there too. It's not as like, you know, for me, I know royalties is like a big one, right? Mm-hmm. Like from Spotify. But, you know, I have other opportunities too that come in where it's like, you know, I'll do like a video gig here and there. I'll do like something like a promotional video for yep. a company. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's like, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities out there, and it just it kind of comes down to how creative are you willing to get. But I want it that way though, you know, because yeah. I'm in the same bag. Like, uh, I, you know, I get the the sponsors, the YouTube video money, I have a Patreon page, Twitch donators, music streams, people pay for beats, mixing, all stuff like that. So. It keeps it interesting. It keeps it fun for me to, like, have different things to do mm. every day with all those things. You know, if I just, like, if I started a podcast and just did a podcast for my job, I don't think I'd be happy. Even yeah. if I, like, enjoyed doing podcasts because it's just it's just one thing. I always want to be able to, like, pivot if I want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think freedom is success to me yeah and i to think to answer your question yeah and one more thing i want to throw onto that just like that pile of whatever we're building right now uh <laughs> it's compost is, yeah the compost <laughs> the, this compost of information uh is trying new things yeah. you know what mm. i mean being willing to try new things is important too because you never know because when i started my podcast it's not like i was like oh i want to start a podcast it was mm-hmm. more my homie like yo I got a podcast studio Mm-hmm. I know you will have fire guests. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, give it a try. See what happens, you yep. know? And it ended up growing into something that I really enjoy doing. And, you know, yep. I'm building my foundation as a podcaster. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like, I'm starting to get, and as it grows, I'm starting to get more and more messages where it's like, yo, this really helped me this episode. You know, I found out because of this, because of you and stuff like that. So that's been really rewarding in that sense, you mm-hmm. know, and like, yeah, you know, the fact that, like, people are taking something away from it is, like, really the most, the coolest thing about it. And I think that applies with everything. Like, your YouTube, like, I'm sure you have reacted to something that you've put somebody on to that they've never even heard about, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's rewarding, too, just being able to share what you got going on. Yeah, getting those type of messages are always the best. Yeah, dude. When you know that what you're doing is helping somebody else. Even if that wasn't really the intent, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you just, I don't know, this kind of strengthens your relationships with a lot of People that come up here, I'd imagine. You know yeah. what I mean? To have a nice talk down talk, sit down with them. I mentioned this last time on that episode that got deleted. Did you know about that? Um <laughs> well, which one was that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um yeah, like we uh what was I just talking about? You said <laughs> we were talking about uh compost. <laughs> no, we were talking about uh uh I got distracted by the message that got deleted part. Um uh, I'll bring it back, I'll cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we were talking about, dude, how did I lose it? Strength and Okay. Okay. Straight, yeah. Straight yeah. yeah. We were go. talking about how me and you have never had a sit, sit down, down like conversation this, yeah. or we like, even when, you know, we saw each other like at the pizza place at, uh, near Toad's place and all stuff like that. Like we like sat. quick interactions. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like quick interactions. Like we never really had a conversation like that. That's what I learned about this podcast, so too. So the podcast gives you an opportunity to do that with those people that— It's really cool, too, and people, like, kind of see—and, like, even Danimal, who I, like, have mm-hmm. known forever, who just recently was on, like, mm-hmm. we ran into each other in Target, and, like, it's always like that, like, yo, like, we got a link soon, we got to do something. Mm-hmm. So it's nice when you actually do versus just, like, 
Do you know how many times I've said, like, let's link and do something to oh, somebody? Bro. Yeah, yeah. I get uh, it. Everybody, I get it. everybody. Yeah. But I want to bring this to the end zone, dude. So okay. what's your message to the world? Um, ShopJoeyNato.com. Get it to know. <laughs> that's that's <right>. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we got the CT hats on there. But yeah. anyways, that's not. That's like your signature, dude. That's how I recognize you, like, when I'm looking for you, like, in the parking lot for this pod. Like, I'm yeah. just, like, skimming <laughs> for the CT hat. Bro, it, it's the white. And it's the the CT, and I have an international audience, so I want to try to put Connecticut out there in a little way that I can. So, and it's white, so in YouTube thumbnails it pops out more. Mm. That's why I wear it. <laughs> the two reasons why I wear it. Message to the world's got to be never give up. That's it. You're lucky to be here. Never give up, no matter what you do. I'm gonna put myself on blast right now. I'm in my 30s, man. I'm in my 30s, but I'm doing these things that you know, teenagers want to do and all stuff like that. So, look, it's not the end of the line if you don't do it when you're, you know, super young or whatever. And your friends or some people you see online are expi- uh, not expiring, aspiring to do what you want to do and maybe even achieving. Everybody has their own different timeline. Just never give up. Stick with what you want to do. I know it's super cliche, but I'm here because... I didn't give up after having all these different jobs, moving to L.A. twice, living out of my car for a little bit when I was in L.A., coming back home, living with my mother, having to work at her job for a while. I still kept pursuing what I wanted to do, and that's why I'm able to have success. (laughs) There you go. But, yeah, dude, I mean, it's also your resilience. You know what I mean? That's how I, like, everything you said, like, just not willing to stop, like, there, there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to stop you from keeping it because you love what you do. Exactly. I've tried before. There was a time in my life where I was like, forget this. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. It just didn't work. Mm. It's like the, the craft and the drive just like pulled me back in. It's like, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have unfinished business. So, yeah, I don't know. And I, I'm not, this is so not a Joey Natto thing to say, but I feel like the universe just pushed me in the direction that I wanted to. You know what I mean? I feel like it had something set out for me, and it just would not allow me to stray away from what I had to do. That yeah. is so not a thing. Like, I don't believe too much in, like, like extra... I don't Higher know. powers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into it, but that's not really my thing. But, yeah, that's what it feels like, though. It feels yeah. like the universe, like, pulled me in a certain direction. And you feel like you found your purpose. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it make, I make a lot of people, so they say, <laughs> people tell me I make them very happy with my content, with my music. I'm sure you make such happy music, man. I'm sure you get messages all the time saying, yo, this song saved my life, X, Y, Z, you know, like that, that happens all the time. Your videos help me with this, with the depression I'm going through, all stuff like that. You know I mean? I'm somebody with anxiety myself and, you know, so I like, it's it's amazing when you get that and you realize that you're helping people out. But yeah. again, it just goes back to the fact that never gave up. So there you go. That's all you can do, dude, is never give up. Bro. You put out your video the other day of you being like, what, 12 years old? Oh, you're yeah. You're working on stuff and you just went year through to year the years. To year to that, year. Was, that was amazing. Thank that, you, that dude. That was really cool. Yeah. And it, like, same, same thing. Bro, it just feels good to be able to do it like for as long as I have and still – in my eyes, have a long way to go, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, my last question is what's next for you? Um, Man, honestly, remember when I said I haven't had the discipline to really map out my goals? Mm. Mapping out my goals. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it, dude. <laughs> that, I'll shoot you a text about it, too, like in a couple, a little bit. You know what I mean? I'll give you an opportunity to map out your goals and be like, yo, how's the map coming, dude? Oh, you know what? Hold me accountable. I love holding my homies accountable, dude. Bro, I do it amazing. all the time, bro. Like, I have my home, and I'll put them on blast right now. Jet, I've been asking for a verse for three weeks, dog. Where's that verse, dog? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but I think holding your people accountable is important. And honestly, that makes you a better friend because I think a whack friend is like going to be like, the nah, yes man. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But like, nah, dog, I need that fucking verse. Bro, I'm so, uh, yeah, uh, I know you want to wrap things up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. One of the things that I love my friends for is they would absolutely tell me if something I made was whack. Mm. They would tell me if it was trash. They would tell me if I re- needed to redo something. They'd be like, yo, this is. I know you worked two weeks on the song. It's not deleted. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've always had friends that just 
kept it real with me, and I'm so so grateful. For circle that. is so important, dog. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. circle is so important. But Joey, if people want to find you, how can they connect with you? Uh, at Lucky Boy Nato on Instagram and Twitter or X, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> if you type in Joey Nato on uh, YouTube, I have four different channels. Pick one, have fun. <laughs> Go subscribe and then on to Twitch. all of them. Yeah, on Twitch. We, like, play games over on Twitch. Sometimes make music live on Twitch. So you can come through there. Just Joey Nato. I'm just, I'm everywhere. And just let me know. If you, li- if you let me know specifically, you listen to this podcast episode, I'll make sure we have a conversation together because I'll love you for it. Let's Mike, go. Mike is the man. So Joey's yeah. also the man. But but he's more the man. But he's the man, too. The man, man. <laughs> Joey, I appreciate you coming on, dude. Yes, sir. For the first time. Yeah, for the first time. <laughs> Not There was no deleted episode. Not at all. That was mes- mentioned a couple times in the spot. It's time to go, dude. Goodbye. now i want to share with you guys my thought of the day and my thought of the day is this well it's actually joey's thought of the day that i'm just recycling at this moment it's just to never give up you got to stay consistent you got to keep working hard and no matter what you got to get good at your craft and also you got to believe before the world does